Hello everyone, it's Duckfairy07 and today we are playing Cascade Zoo. Maybe some of you remember my Rokiri Rhinos list uh, that I had some pretty good results with it. And uh, this is iteration of a list, but as you can see, no rhinos in this list. Just a cow as only cascade target and of course a, a smaller number of cascade cards. Still we have a six of those with three mana and uh, three blood bread elves. Of course, there is the most popular card right now, the One Ring. Uh, this is also one of the archetypes uh, where this card in fits very well. And this is a grindy deck, but also at times it can be a tempo deck. So uh, all these cards, except these six cards, can really uh, let you play a good tempo game and finish things uh, early. But uh, if you... Uh, if you are forced to play a longer game, uh, these six cards provide incredible, incredible late game. And the deck is uh, grindy by itself because of the general Rokuric and the uh, Cascade spells and the Fury and the overall power, the raw power of uh, single spells you can draw. So uh, there is a lot going on here, but uh, think of this list as a, uh, as a uh, zoo version of uh, Rhinos. Uh, so, uh, but you, and instead of cascading into uh, Rhinos, you cascade into Territorial Cow, which is also a very powerful card in modern right now. So you have uh, you have uh, t four fire ices, which we generally use uh, if we have uh, three mana spells in our hand, which are General Ferris or Kyrick or the Cascade spells. So uh, we can use this to tap our opponent's land in the upkeep to let's say steal a turn. So we are able to start doing things first, to cast General Ferris or Kyrick, or the Cascade spell, finding Kau, uh, whatever. So this is that is always a good, good tempo play. And uh, of course it can also be a removal, it can tap a blocker, tap an attacker, whatever. It's a very, very useful card. Uh, Furies, uh, three of them in the main, one on the sideboard. Uh, it's uh, very useful in this... Uh, a high mana curve uh, type of uh, decks. It lets you uh, stabilize in the early game to win in the mid game and the late game. Uh, so, uh, best uh, all powerful two mana uh, zoo creatures, which provides a great tempo for this deck. And uh, these uh, nine cards that provide a crazy, crazy grind. Sorry, not these cards, but I meant, I meant these nine cards. Uh, they are very very grindy when you pair them, especially when you pair them with the Cascade cards and the Furies. Uh, you can uh, you can get get really grindy and outgrind almost anyone. On the sideboard, similar to the Cascade decks, we have Force of Negations, Mystical Disputes, a Force of Vigors, Endurances, additional Blood Moon Hate, and one of Fury. So uh, that is it. Uh, so let's uh, check out some gameplay. I was uh, very uh, had a very good score with this one. Okay. Well, this was my first game with it. So let's start with this one and see how all the games uh, played out. So in the match one, I was playing a second. I had a decent hand. Pretty good one, actually. Three lands. A fire ice a binding, uh, two cascade spells. It seems pretty good. Also, drawing into territorial cow is always great. It is the best card in deck. Opponent starts off with the uh, Arab champion. That's unfortunate against uh, our territorial cow, but we play leather binding in deck, so we're good. Uh, this was uh, in the match one. This was uh, Heliod deck, which is pretty uh, popular right now. A lot of play people playing this. Uh, various versions. So unfortunately our opponent played another great blocker for the cow and at this point only had one binding. So I still uh, I decided uh, to go for uh, to tap a land, uh, the land which had a Topia Sprawl on it and uh, go for the Leyland binding this turn, exile the Arik champion hoping to get another um, Hoping to get another Leyland Binding. In the meantime, I'm fine casting my uh, Cascaders. 
It cascaded into another Charlotte, finding another uh, territorial cabo, and start attacking with my uh, cabo. They, I mean, they can they have a free block, but uh, I still get uh, the ability, so it's uh, very useful to attack when I can. My opponent went for the Eldramis Cold and played their Heliot, but they didn't have uh, uh, didn't still have um, uh, Vulcan Ballista. I found a second Leyland Binding, which uh, is uh, one of the best draws at the moment. I went for the Outburst to give all my creatures a plus one to deal more damage and find another cow on the field, uh, plus the Leyland Binding. Uh, I'm holding the Leyland Binding in case they go for the Ballista or whatever. So they go for it, I didn't wait for them to target Ballista with lifelink, uh, instead I went for I immediately remove uh, the Heliot. Uh, they go for the Rager, Captain of Fields, I'm fine by this. I still uh, have a lot of... Uh, I still have a pretty good turn here. I go to attack with my... Um, all my cows get all abilities. I had all four. Uh, I had all four of these creatures in my hand, and uh, I uh, cast the Leyland Binding in combat to remove one of their creatures, which means I have a little this turn, and uh, that is it. Okay, so let's check out the next game. A pretty aggressive uh, game one, where I had uh, all four cows, three on the field, one in hand. And the Leyland Bindings uh, sold the game. Okay, so started again with a decent hand, but this time didn't have uh, didn't have uh, interaction. Although the turn to uh, start with territorial cow is always fine because it helps you dig for uh, interaction. So I definitely don't mind that. Okay, uh, casted my cow on turn two. I have Charles for the next turn and the redraw with Kao, which is which seems great. Opponent uh, thinks about his play for some time. Plays our champion in the end and uh, Haybar might. Gaining life and passing the turn. So um, I play the planes, uh, attack with Kao to get the ability. Discard the land, uh, find just another land, and then play my uh, Shardless Agent to put another cow on the field, which means next turn I get two abilities. My opponent maybe thought I'm playing like uh, Rhinos, so they sacked the Ranger Captain of Fears, but it was unnecessary. They didn't know I'm playing only cow in this deck. Opponent went for the Boromir, which is unfortunate for my Bloodbred Elf in the hand. Uh, I drew too many lands, uh, but I have a uh, head cow in hand to try to discard some of them. Draw something better. I draw, uh, discard two more lands, but still draw uh, more lands. Uh, I get, um, yeah, I, I wasn't able to play this, so I click no on cow and uh, just to resolve uh, the Bloodbraid Elf because of the Boromir was on the field. My opponent also didn't have much, just Arvan at this point, and I did a misplay here. I forgot that Pendle Heaven gives plus one, plus two. I thought it's plus one, plus one. That's why I went for the Fire Eyes first. And this was maybe the reason why I lost this game. So I went for the discard there. Still had Omnat and Fury for the next turn, which was decent. My opponent had Ari Champion and Arwen uh, as pretty good uh, blockers there in this situation. I went to tap the Ari Champion so I have a better attack with Kao. Didn't want to do uh, any drawing at this point, I was happy with Sion and Fury in hand.
opponent went for the spike feeder and another halfling and they were now on zero cards in hand so i played my uh, fury killed boromir boromir gave everybody the indestructible so i had to skip this uh, combat step and uh, opponent find a top deck a collected company in this situation which was a very good top deck and they find uh, the Heliod, which means this is uh, it's infinite life. It's not infinite life because it is uh, MTGO, but it is in a paper. It is infinite life. Plus they had the Ranger Captain for the Ballista. They didn't have immediate combo, but they had it on the next turn. I didn't draw uh, what I needed to draw, so that was the game. Okay, so let's check out the match three. Okay, in the match three, I played uh, played first, and I had uh, two scions. I think scion is very good against the opponent's deck, cause uh, they don't have any flyers as far as I know, so they have a really hard time uh, dealing with scion. They probably have something to get rid of the scion, although I'm not sure. 100% so I was very happy with casting my second scion and just uh, casting the second uh, the tapped land opponent when goes for the collected company here finding a uh, drenet magistrate and the heliod which was pretty good but it just didn't work as well as opponent wanted against uh, my hand with the two scions I went to cast my uh, omnat which has a uh, hexproof first strike so I have two Scions for lethal next turn. Opponent can can try to gain some life, but they can't really get uh, out of this situation. And uh, they concede that, that was the game. So uh, let's go to the match two. Match two was pretty pretty tense. I uh, ended up winning the game having just two seconds left on my clock, so we'll see what happened. Opponent was on hardened scales. So I went for the wooded foothills. I had a pretty good hand, uh, Fury, Leyland Binding, Territorial Cow. This, these are ex exactly the cards you want to have. So obviously you have multiple decisions. At this point, but my uh, the decision I always go for is uh, play if there is any chance of uh, being able to play territorial cow on turn two I do this because uh, this lets me uh, start attacking uh, opponent pressuring their life total but also uh, doing a drawing and redrawing so in this situation I go for fury. Uh, for and for damage to fury opponent uh, has to uh, sack the ravager or sack the worker but they decide to sack ravager and make worker 5-5 five five. so in response i'm not in response but after that i go for the leyland binding to kill their uh, remaining creature and just continue attacking uh, with cavo pressuring life total as i said i was very happy with the current hand so i didn't want to uh, touch anything uh, Leyland bindings are crucial for this matchup and the Sion of Draco also can be very important if they have a flyer and they found the Blicknot Nexus. This is very important. Okay, so uh, I decide to... Uh, Fire Ice is, I'm, is okay here but with the Welding Jar not so much. So um, I decide to uh, do the draw, redraw and uh, use the binding to get rid of the ballista ballista is a very dangerous card in this deck probably one of the most dangerous so now they're able to uh, attack for it with the ravager but i'm fine with this as long as i uh, can continue attacking with kawu doing the redraws and i found a land which was very important so this means i was able to play a blocker and still hold the mana for the leyland binding
Okay, so I did, I accidentally did a small mistake here. I let the Arcbound worker enter the battlefield. This meant that uh, now they're able to um, put uh, counters on a worker. But yeah, my logic was that uh, they'll just animate the Nexus and put counters on Nexus uh, instead. But uh, if they put uh, counters on Nexus, they wouldn't be able to uh, to block for uh, that turn. I would be able to attack with both Kavu and the Scion, which uh, would put my opponent a uh, lot lower on life. And uh, I uh, needed just a top deck a land for the win here. And I got the land. So either way, if they, my opponent attacked or not, it wouldn't matter because... Uh, uh, I, I had a land to cast the Blood Braid Elf, so I would have uh, the lethal anyway. So that was it. If they can block two creatures, but uh, it is still lethal damage. So that was game one. Uh, so it wasn't actually a mistake to uh, play Lela Binding after resolving the creature there, because uh, then... Uh, I, I mean, it was a mistake, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't so large. It wasn't. Uh, didn't. Uh, didn't completely ruin my game. It would. I would be in a better position if I did. Uh, if I did uh, do things differently, but yeah. Okay. So I was again able to cast the Kavu on turn two. I had a lot of options here. I think casting Kavu is the best one because my hand is not greatest, and I have to uh, try to do some uh, redraws, try to find uh, cards, uh, better cards. I need more. I play my second cow and uh, okay, so opponent uh, starts doing some nasty stuff with uh, what is it called? The Ozolit. I uh, let the four damage through, then I go for. Uh, so my opponent uh, also did a mistake here. They didn't uh, didn't destroy the hanger back in response. I think it would be better for them if they did that. Uh, so now I uh, uh, unfortunately they had this member, so I wasn't able to uh, I wasn't able to attack with both. If I was able to attack with both, I would have. A fire eyes to tap the hanger back and a probable uh, a probable kill uh, on my turn. Unfortunately, opponent had this member, so and also they had a hanger back. Uh, unfortunately, they top decked another hanger back from the top, which was among a few best draws at this point. Uh, I thought like I need to continue attacking in this situation. And just I played my ring, uh, hoping to get Omnat, start gaining life, uh, start doing some stuff. Yeah, so I still almost had, a, I was still almost find a little here, but I was missing a little. Should have probably played another ring here, but I decided against it. Opponent plays another Hardened Scales And uh, yeah, I, I did uh, I did the mistake here, I, I should have uh, tapped the two flyers and the champ hanger back with the Kavu But instead I uh, They had a little here, they just didn't attack I think, yeah, they didn't attack I don't know why, but yeah, I was able to now cast the Omnat to get uh, more draws uh, from uh, the One Ring, and I uh, I, I was uh, losing a lot of time. Uh, 
losing a lot a lot of time here and uh, it took it takes a lot of time to play all these spells to do all these abilities the it's just time consuming consuming on modo and i misclicked through attack phase here so i didn't attack i think this was also very important opponent would jump probably maybe it wouldn't be that important but yeah okay so i had the ring here i had an opportunity to um I was forced to play like uh, pretty fast here because I was pressured uh, with uh, time for the last game if I lose this one. I started uh, with Fury. I killed their Zabaz, uh, but Zabaz, yeah, they had managed to destroy their hangar back. And now I had a very hard task trying to kill 20 something uh, flyers. There is a chance of succeeding to doing this, but not really a high chance. I can theoretically gain a bunch of life and uh, Cast a bunch of uh, furies and force of figures, leyland bindings, uh, creatures, whatever. I've uh, destroyed the ozolit and the uh, scales there to prevent them from moving more counters. But yeah, so I mean. I had uh, two more draws here, I was able to play a bunch of hero uh, creatures, but uh, didn't get uh, what I needed. I was able to kill all their big doctors here, but they still had 20 something uh, of them. So uh, that was it, that was the game. So let's check out the last one. Had to mulligan this one. I kept um, Sion, two lands, four, two force of figures and one ring. I was hoping to get a green card for the force. Started the last match with five minutes on the clock. Uh, problem is when you play with one ring, you lose a lot of time because the first the game prolongs by itself. Uh, the games. Uh, just be, be, uh, become much longer and also uh, you you are forced to click through all these abilities first the ATB ability then the draws then you play Omnath then you have the ATB on Omnath then you have two uh, abilities from the lands on Omnath you got to click through all of this and it's uh, very time consuming so I was able to use the force there, kill uh, the Hardened Scales and the Urza Saga. Uh, still my opponent had uh, another Scales and the Arcbound Ravager, pretty good hand, hand for them. I wasn't able to attack here, because uh, um, they, they, they would make a Ravager bigger than my cow. but I had a one ring, so I started um, drawing uh, cards, I had a protection at this moment. I uh, find another ring and find a Leyland Binding. Unfortunately, didn't get mana. I uh, didn't want to risk uh, casting the Omnath into not getting a land here. So I decided to spend this turn uh, playing Binding on the Ravager before they get uh, really crazy with it. So, uh, yeah, this is very dangerous in case they draw almost um, anything at this point. They can find little very easily. So you got to get rid of Ravager uh any way you can so i had uh i had this way i had a blocker for the nexus and at the same time i was able to continue attacking with the territorial cabo i also have a ring providing me uh, with the infinite card draw so i don't mind jumping uh, but i yeah, i think i kind of misplayed here i should have just played the sign of draco and continue attacking with the trample on cabo so uh the ring, I think the ring wasn't a good choice here, but I was uh, really pressured with time. I had just one minute, one and a half minute on my clock at this point. Uh, so I really, really, really needed to find uh, solutions here. My opponent was on six, uh, but yeah, casting all these cards just uh, take a lot of time. 
and especially when you cast Omnath, you uh, get uh, you lose a lot of time doing uh, these abilities. Uh, 50 seconds left at this point. So I played uh, Sion. It's very important here as a blocker for uh, the um, as a blocker. But I cast one ring anyway to get her protection for till the next turn. And uh, my plan was like I have three creatures for the next turn. Just kill uh, the doctor with the fury and uh, Boseju another one. So I had a I had a certain kill. I uh, went for Boseju there. Uh, they had the welding jar of course, but uh, the welding uh, the regenerate ability taps the creature. So I'm fine doing this, and I got rid of uh, two blockers and attack with every attack with everything. I still had to use my abilities in combat, and uh, with three seconds of, of clock on clock, I succeed to win the game, and that was it. The two O. So let's go on to the next game. Okay, so uh, this time I had a pretty pretty slow hand, but it is okay to keep a hand like this one when you're playing first. I mean, I still have a turn to uh, interaction in Leyland Binding, which is especially good uh, in this matchup because this is Amulet Titan. And I'm playing on the draw and I have a turn 3 uh, general still into turn 4 uh, Bloodbraid Elf, which will provide me incredible amount of power on the field. My opponent had an uh, incredibly slow hand. I'm amazed they even kept a hand like this. It's just terrible. Uh, but yeah, they went for their uh, construct on on turn two. On turn three, finally find the amulet, and still they didn't have anything to do with it. So I would say a pretty bad hand for the opponent, and. Uh, uh, I used this opportunity to uh, cast the Sino Draco and the Leyland Binding, uh, removing the amulet, uh, buying a turns in this situation for my opponent uh, to not be able to cast the Titan for a few more turns. Then I get uh, blood, cast the Blood Red Elf, and this is why I played this deck. So you cast the Blood Red Elf, you get the token, then you cascade into Shardless Agent, get the token, you cascade into Territorial Cow. And you get another token, and you, then you untap and basically one shot your opponent. This is incredible amount of power which happened by just playing two cards. This is so sick, so sick. And all my creatures have a first strike. I just went for the attack with Kao to do the redraw because opponent played uh, the one ring. So I played uh, one ring of my own and went for the Leyland Binding, removing their ring. So they didn't have the amulet or other one ring at this point, so they can see the game. That was it. Let's go and check the game too. Okay, let's see what I sideboarded in. Uh, obviously, a uh, force of figures and the Busages. Removed a, a generals, one omnat, uh, one ring, and a few outbursts. And uh, blood red elves because I also got the force of uh, negation sin. I had excellent uh, turn two uh, force of figure there, destroying amulet of figure and Urza saga. It's so very hard for um, opponents to recover from this. I was able to cast a turn two scion. And had another force in hand plus a uh, few more fire ices. So, pretty, pretty good situation for me. Uh, I was looking to find a turn land, but I didn't get it. This would kind of be the perfect time to play it. Uh, but instead, I went for uh, fire uh, ice on their land and upkeep. They play another grazer, and that's it. Uh, but uh, they did play these two gracers, put some additional lands on the field, but now they were they kind of stuck on five lands, five mana, sorry, and they were not able to find the sixth land, which they probably were looking for, to cast the uh, titan. 
I will still have uh, eyes uh, to cast on Titan even if they find the land. They had the tears under though, so I was forced to put another threat on the field. I decided to go for the Shardless Agent into Territorial Kavu, hopefully uh, doing uh, Kavu doing some redraws for the next turn. I'm still holding all this time, force a figure with the Shardless. So I go for the Scion there, and uh, so I'm still keeping the Fire Eyes for the upkeep, and I get the Trample on Kavu. Uh, plus uh, I have a, still have a green mana for uh, Force of Figure. Opponent uh, plays another Tear Asunder, kills my Scion, so I decide to go for a second Kavu, because with Fire Eyes on the next turn I have lethal. And I do this, I tap the Grazer and uh, attack my opponent for lethal, that, that was the game. Okay, so that was uh, match 3, let's check out the match 4. Uh, okay, uh, again playing first and I would say this is again another uh, pretty good hand. Uh, this uh, this game was actually uh, pretty funny. I was playing against a scam. This is a tier zero deck at the moment. They went for turn two uh, scam grieve. They saw uh, they removed two later bindings from my hand. Uh, but I uh, they knew I got the Charlotte's agent in hand and uh, they will not be able to attack uh, on the next turn and their hand was probably uh, nothing much at this point and they immediately concede the game. So let's check out the game too. Uh, game 2 I kept a pretty pretty mediocre hand but uh, I knew I was playing uh, first in a game 3, so I decided to go for it. Opponent discarded the Force of Negation, they need to do this uh, to be able to scam the Grief. Uh, I still got a uh, Fire Eyes from the top, I was pretty happy with it. I also had a second Force of Negation if needed for the Blood Moon. So, uh, in the main phase, I tap the Grief so they can't attack, I also find uh, the one ring, so at this point I have the one ring plus Omnat. this is a pretty pretty good situation for me. I'm still not that, uh, my life total is not that pressured. But my opponent had a Sheldred, which is a uh, biggest nemesis of the one rings deck at the moment. So, even with Omnat. And the one ring, uh, this was not possible, opponent, uh, I mean I could have played around it to not draw a card there, but it was just uh, too much, and uh, I would lose anyway, so that was it. Okay, uh, let's check out the game 3. Sheldred is very good against this deck, if you don't uh, find a solution for it on time. Had to mulligan the starting hand, I have kept the 6, a pretty good 6. A Kau, Scion, a Fire Eyes, I think this is pretty good. Uh, so, um, playing first, again a similar start. Uh, I resolve uh, Territorial Kau on turn 2. Opponent goes for uh, the Fury Scam, uh, kills my Kau, this is a pretty good play for them. Uh, I decide not to play the Scion, but to go for the Fire Eyes. I tap the Fury, save myself uh, 8 life there. Uh, opponent plays the Orcish Bow Masters, getting the ping and the counter on uh, army token. I had a Fury to kill the Fury there, but uh, I top decked the Leyland Binding, so I decided to save the Fury and just ca uh, kill the Fury with the Leyland Binding. So I just played the Binding on the Fury and uh, had my uh, Scion for the next turn to start attacking the opponent and uh, start being the aggressor, but the opponent had uh, 
opponent had terminate. Uh, it was okay because I find myself a uh, Blood Braid Elf, uh, which gave me a uh, General Ferris Rokirik. And I had the one ring for the next turn, which was pretty good, also Fury there, but my opponent draws ideally into Swamp plus Tatsis to get rid of my one ring. But it didn't matter much because uh, with the General Ferris Rokirik on the field, Basically, every uh, multicolor spell is a free golem tokens, and its uh, scam has a very hard, hard time uh, dealing with this. We can see how I sideboarded. Uh, so, I removed uh, one ring, and that's it for this game. Uh, I just removed uh, the one ring for Fort Fury, and that was it. Uh, this was uh, on the play. So that was a game against uh, Red Black Scam, the most popular deck uh, at the moment. And uh, we will now see the trophy match. Uh, a trophy match I should have won, but I did uh, I did a mistake. We'll see what it was. It wasn't a big mistake, but it was a slight mistake that uh, that could possibly uh, just. Uh, turn out as a completely different game if I played it uh, differently. We'll see what happened exactly. So, but this was a living end and uh, in the main deck this is a very bad matchup, especially when you're playing second. Uh, there is just not uh, much I can do here, except if I have Fury to put it into the graveyard, or if I'm playing first to try to discard the general first or Kyrick, and then after they uh, resolve uh, the Living End, then I can try to play my Cascade Spell to completely recover. That is a, a good plan, but uh, this time, this time, uh, opponent had a turn 3 Living End doing a bunch of abilities here with the Grief, with the Architects of Phyllis, I wasn't able to do anything, and that was easy uh, win in game 1 for the opponent. Okay, so in the game 2, I start the game with the Mystical Dispute and Endurance and the Fury. I think this is a fine game. Uh, I boarded in uh, Disputes, Force of Negations and uh, uh, Endurances. Uh, take out Bindings, uh, Bloodblade Elves and the General Ferris or Kyrix. I also had a green card in Omnata there to be able to pitch cast Endurance. Opponent puts two creatures into their graveyard, plays their land tapped. Uh, I decide to go for the Charlest, uh, to put some pressure on the field, force my opponent uh, to do something, uh, which is a good situation for me because uh, I have uh, the endurance, I can play it for free. Opponent decides to go for the subtlety. Uh, they shock in, uh, play the fury. And the go for the living end, but I have the endurance, and uh, they didn't have a second subtlety. They kind of didn't really have to play that subtlety, they played this pretty badly. They should have saved that sub subtlety and just go for the living end after I played my uh, shardless. Yeah, but they decided to play this differently, and... Uh, didn't work out for them, they concede when I pitch cast the Endurance. So it was time to go to the game 3, and in the game 3 I had everything I needed to win. But, yeah, we'll see what happened. Okay, so it's not a very good hand, but I have Fire Eyes. And Fire Eyes can really, really do wonders in this matchup. It buys you a turn and draws you a card, which means I have four draws to get something uh, playable. And I prolong them uh, from doing anything until my turn three, which means my disputes work and my force of negations work. I also top deck to the endurance, which, uh, which was huge. Uh, I, uh, I decided to play the territorial cow because this uh, kind of forces opponent to start doing something, but this was the mistake, yeah, okay, so 
this was the mistake. I decided to. I should have just left. Uh, I should have just let the opponent resolve the living end and uh, bring back two architects. Architects are just not relevant at all. This was a huge, huge, huge mistake. Uh, their board would be two architect architects and shardless agent, and I would just play the shardless agent I discarded and get uh, territorial cabo on the field, which would completely uh, uh, block them, and they would not be able to attack, and I would still have my endurance in hand, so I would be in a much better, much better situation, and I would have more resources also. A cow will help me get rid of some of the land from my hand to start uh, try redrawing cards. Uh, it was fine, I got a scion here and I started attacking with endurance. This is pretty good luck, endurance and scion. Uh, but this new uh, living end list uh, have some uh, different card choices in, and they definitely can, they definitely can, uh, uh, more easily win in a fair way that they would be able before. My opponent uh, pitch casts a grief here. And I didn't really expect them to cast the Fury after this. So I decided to go for to face with this uh, 2 damage. I should have maybe killed the agent. I would say myself uh, 4 life or more. But after this they cast uh, Fury which was very bad news for me. And I uh, recycled, I cycled in that Atrium into another fetch which was just terrible. So I got land into land and I had to take this uh, 8 damage. So if I fired the Shadows Agent I would be on 11 life now which would be significantly better. And I would maybe have uh, one more turn to try to top deck something. Uh, I got the Shadows Agent so I was uh, able to uh, block both of these creatures. I thought like they already played uh, Fury and uh, some of their stuff, so I have better top decks. I'm going to do the blocking here, but uh, I top decked another land and they had a Curator of Mysteries. Uh, still, this was fine because I top decked the Scion of Draco on my turn, so I was able to trade with the Curator of Mysteries. But, uh, yeah, opponent had another Fury to finish off the game. I feel like if I played this, uh, uh, if I played some cards slightly, slightly different, I would win the game and get the trophy. Uh, I uh, The deck uh, felt uh, very good. Uh, all together and uh, I played another league with it and also got a 4-1 uh, losing to burn in that one so total score 8-2 but I'm very happy with how the deck overall feels so uh, if I already said in the beginning some of you remember my Rokiri Krynos list and this is this is very similar but uh, this list is already proven uh, very good uh, because uh, inspired by Rokiri Krynos one player uh, won the challenge actually with a very similar list in the March uh, this year and I just uh, added some uh, one rings into it and uh, the omnats so I think uh, it is uh, the list that is already proven good did uh, very good results I had uh, multiple 5 o's with similar lists uh, winning the challenge is huge and uh, I think uh, this uh, strategy is already proven uh, very good and uh, it is uh, the great fit for the One Ring and Omnat fits in well too. So uh, I really really like it. I think this is among uh, best zoo lists at the moment partially for the re because of the reason uh, the One Ring fits in very well. And uh, this deck can easily outgrind uh, similar decks playing one ring like uh, four color uh, omnet piles. 
uh, but uh, because of uh, very strong, uh, very strong uh, uh, singular spells like uh, Charles Agent uh, means territorial cow every time, which is seven power. Sign of Draco is hard for them to deal with, and uh, yeah, all the, all of this means uh, I also have a solu good solutions for their ring in leyland binding, same as they do. And the fire ice can also be helpful, providing a good tempo. So this is pretty even matchup, but uh, I have some of the cards that really uh, they have trouble dealing with, like uh, dispute, uh, force of negation, and uh, territorial Kavu, Sion Draco, especially. So uh, that is it. Um, I hope you like the league. Hope you like the gameplay. And uh, that is it for today. If you want to help the channel, click like, uh, click subscribe, and uh, comment in the video. So, until the next time, uh, that is it for today. Thank you for watching.